fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Whenever the pioneers gathered around the campfire, they talked of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness. And the story of his greatest adventure has come down to us through the generations. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Huddle's waiting on the trail ahead. We've got to hurry. Hail Silver! Hooray! St. Louis was a thriving city of contrasts, where the culture and civilization of the East hobnobbed with the adventurous pioneer types who had been or were about to be exposed to the dangers and hardships of the vast, unbroken, and frequently lawless settlements of the western states. St. Louis was an important western railroad terminus, where arriving trains had become too commonplace to arouse interest or demand attention. No one seemed to notice that several cars on one train that pulled in after dark were shunted to a siding and left there while the engine moved away. The cars were just outside the limits of the city. The people in the cars were quiet, speaking only in tense, hushed voices. Gentlemen, this meeting may determine the fate of the United States of America. I must impress one thing upon you. What is said or done in this railroad car is never to reach the ears of anyone outside. Hickok. Yes, sir? You're well known in St. Louis. Did you manage to get through the city without being recognized? Yes, sir. The man who asked me to come here said to keep it a secret. Mm. Cody, does anyone know you're here? No, sir. Before I tell you about the organized threat to the future and security of our country, I'll ask Mr. Calkins to call the roll. Very good, Mr. Secretary. Uh, one thing. Many of you frontier scouts don't know who I am. Let me explain so you'll fully realize the seriousness of this conference. I am the secretary to the President of the United States. When we're ready for him, the President himself will come from Washington. Now, let us have the roll call. Hickok. Here. Yeah. Cody. Here. Yep. Stewart here. Foster. As the chairman called the roll, the soft light from oil lamps fell upon the faces of government officials, the stern faces of military leaders, and the weather-beaten faces of frontiersmen. The meeting brought these men together on the common ground of sincere love of their country and a grim determination to defend the country against all enemies. And Swift. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will now get to the subject as quickly as possible. We in Washington have information about a plot to overthrow that part of the government which applies to the states west of the Mississippi. 
A plot to form a new nation, a nation opposed to those principles upon which our country is founded. Behind this movement is greed and ambition. One man, unknown to all of us, who would make himself an emperor in a free land, threatens to destroy all things that you brave men have fought to save. Well, uh, what's known about this emperor, about his plan? Yeah. Well, very little. Most of what we believe is founded on suspicion and somewhat sketchy dedu de deduction. We have reason to believe that his plans are well along and that he has built up a vast organization. Are any of the members known? No living members are known to us. We do, however, feel sure that some of them hold important posts in the government. There is no doubt that many have become influential in communities in the West. They seem to work from the inside, boring into the confidence of the people they plan to ruin. They are trying to gain control of scattered communities until they are ready to merge all these into a new nation or empire. Hang it, Mr. Secretary, they can't do it. I know what sort of men we've got in the West. Yes, Cody. But you reckon without consideration of the means those traitors employ. While they get control of the communities, other members of this legion spread poverty, famine, pestilence, and death. They destroy the faith of the people in the government. Of that, we have some proof. They teach hatred and intolerance. They arouse suspicion of public officials. They breed mistrust and spawn greed and false ambition. They promise wealth and riches. They're undermining the United States, and they must be put down. You uh, you speak as though you knew a lot about them. Some of their methods are known. Any individuals? No. How can we fight people we don't know? That is the problem. The problem assigned to us for solution by the president. The way you speak, sir, anyone might be a member of this gang. Mm, that is true. They know us. They know we'll be their opposition, but we don't know them. I'm aware of that. They can shoot from ambush. They can lie and steal, murder, anything that's handy. We can't do those things. Our task is not an easy one. And if we fail... America fails. <laughs> Gentlemen, we must not only suppress this, this outlaw legion, we must do it in a way that will go into history as an example for the future generations. A lesson to our children and their children. If we could only be as, as unknown to them as they are to us. That's it, Cody. If we could work in secret. Oh, how I'd like to meet some of those traitors face to face. Uh, you never will. Work in secret. How can that be done? Disguise ourselves? No. No good. Someone to... to help us. Someone to ferret out the members. The leaders. It'd have to be someone we could trust. Wait. I wonder... Cody... There's one man. One man. Whom do you mean? We're both thinking of the same man, but we don't know his name. Don't know his name? If he knew of Don't his... even know where to reach him. Whom are you talking about? You may have heard of him, General, but I doubt if the secretary or these other men will know the man we're talking about. He's known as... as the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? Yeah, I've heard of him. What is his name, Cody? I don't know. I guess nobody knows his name. He's just called the Lone Ranger. Tell me about him, Hickok. Well, there isn't a man in the country who's handy with a rope or gun or who rides a finer horse. Why, he seems to turn up any place he can be of help. And he never waits around for rewards. But I'd bet my neck he's been responsible for the capture of more crooks than any ten men. Hmm. It's a broad statement, Cody. I'll stand on it. So will I. He wears a mask. He rides a white horse. It's called Silver. Now, if we could only get him working for us, helping us. I have heard stories of the fabulous deeds of this man. I don't believe them. Nor I. What's more, I stoutly disapprove of seeking the aid of a man who refuses to divulge his identity. Now, just one minute, Colonel. We're confronted with a situation that calls for all the aid we can enlist. If a man's loyalty to the flag is unquestioned... Now, there's no doubt about that. The Lone Ranger has dedicated his life to the service of the West. He loves the West... And he'll do anything to help it grow. We can't believe all these stories that we hear. You, Cody, and Hickok have a reputation that is second to none. I feel that you, too, can do far more than any mask man. It wouldn't reflect credit on the army if we seek out the help of a man who is masked. Confound it, sir. The Lone Ranger has a reason for wearing a mask. Do you know him personally, Cody? No, sir. But I'd sure like to locate him and ask him to help us. I object to Now, look here. If you men are really anxious to put down this, this plot, you'll get help where you can without asking too many questions. Now, Cody, 
Now, let's not discuss it further. I say let's discuss it. Let's put the matter before the president. If this man never takes rewards and apparently does no work, how does he live? He has to steal money. That's a lie, and I'd like to ram it down your throat. Gentlemen. Well, he has some sort of a, a silver mine hidden away someplace. That's where he gets his money. I still object to seeking help from this man. Uh, Colonel, perhaps if you we... You pardon me, General, but I'm unmoved by any argument. Then it's a good thing the decision doesn't rest with you. Gentlemen, I'll speak to the President. I'll tell him just what you've told me and ask his approval. Good. Tell the President this is not unanimous. I'll speak to him as soon as I return to Washington. Meanwhile, uh, you might learn the location of this... Lone Ranger. We'll we'll have to find him. Everyone who rides the western trails will have to spread the word among those we know can be trusted. That's it, Cody. Count on my help. We'll pass the word to all the ranchers. They'll tell everyone we know that the Lone Ranger is needed. We'll ride day and night. We'll spread the word from here to the Rockies. From Montana to the Rio Grande. <laughs> The meeting adjourned. The men moved silently through the shadows to their horses, then secretly left the city. The people of St. Louis, not suspecting that some of the nation's most important men had met there, went on with their recreations and amusements. The gambling halls and cabarets were filled with pleasure-seeking crowds that little realized how the fate of a nation might rest on the developments of the night's conference. But over in one corner of the largest of the cafes, the talk was grim and ominous. One of the men who sat at the table spoke in a voice that was barely above a whisper. Before I say more, you must show me a mark of identification. Show me a sign. The man spoken to placed his forearm on the table and drew back the sleeve of his coat. A tattoo mark was revealed on the inside of his wrist. It was small and black and in the form of an arrow. The black arrow? I'm satisfied. Are you suspected? No. I remain in good standing and attended the conference a short time ago. What if you're seen in here without your army uniform? It would arouse no question. I would merely say that I thought it better not to wear the uniform in a place like this. <laughs> I wouldn't want to reflect discredit on the uniform. From you, Colonel? That's funny. But wait before you laugh. Well... Those Westerners wanted to get the help of the Lone Ranger. They did? Well, they must not. I rejected the idea. Good. But he may be fighting us in spite of my objections. I argued as strongly as I could. But Cody and Hickok, I'm afraid, have the secretary won over. He's going to speak to the president while the Lone Ranger is sought for. That's bad. That's bad. We don't know the Lone Ranger. That's just the point. As long as we have our spies on the inside, we can learn of plans that are made to combat the Black Arrow. We'll know who is working against us. But this Lone Ranger, we don't know him. We must get him out of our way. It is important that we know of this, Colonel. Knowing of it, we'll give the necessary instructions to take care of the Lone Ranger. If the secretary convinces the president that the Lone Ranger should help, there is likely to be another conference here near St. Louis. Between whom? The president and the Lone Ranger. Good. We shall plan accordingly. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The greatest Western scouts in the history of the nation were riding far and wide in an effort to find the Lone Ranger. The aid of this masked mystery rider was badly needed by the government. He was being sought for by the special order of the President of the United States. He alone, it was believed, could gather information that would help in breaking up a vast, well-organized plot to overthrow the government and set up a new empire west of the Mississippi. Far and wide, the horsemen ranged, pausing only when they reached one of the scattered pioneers whom they could trust. Jeff, listen to me. Cody, it's a long time since you've been in these parts. Now, keep this under your hat. Have you seen anything of the Lone Ranger? Mm, can't say as I have, not for some time. Heard anybody speak of seeing him around here? Nope. What's up, Bill? If you do hear of him, get a message to him. Yeah, sure thing. What's the message? Tell him to get to the Padre as fast as Silver can take him. The Padre has word for him. Important, eh? The most important message the Lone Ranger will ever get. Uh, the Padre, he'll know who you mean? Yes. Well, step into the house, Bill. You can do with a mite of food and rest. No, I can't stop now. <laughs> but don't forget what I told you. Get up there. Oh, she never rode harder than that for the Pony Express. <laughs> I'm looking for word about the Lone Ranger. Ain't heard anything about him around here for some time. And I got to keep her riding. Go on! For days on end, pausing only to snatch a bit of food and rest, those Westerners raced on across the plains and valleys, swapping horses with friendly ranchers where their mounts became exhausted. Tirelessly, they pushed across mountains and through ravines, carrying the word knowing that each time they stopped, the message would be spread in an ever-increasing circle from that stopping place. No one knew where the Lone Ranger could be reached, yet every man felt sure that somewhere, sooner or later, the famous masked rider would learn that he was needed. The Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were camped in a woods not far from a small town. Tonto had gone into the town for a few supplies, while the Lone Ranger, taking advantage of a few days' rest, overhauled the saddle equipment and inspected the weapons. When Tonto heard that the Lone Ranger was needed so badly, that an important message was waiting for him at a certain ranch, he leaped to the saddle. Get him up, scout! At last, the message was on the way to the Lone Ranger. Tonto halted the paint horse at a small camp in the woods as a tall man leaped to his feet. What is it, Tonto? Message for you. Men in town, make talk. Me fix your saddle. You get ready to ride. A message, Tonto? Who has a message? We ride a long way. Me get message from ranch. Tonto tossed the saddle blanket, then the saddle across the broad back of the snow-white horse. Meanwhile, the lone ranger packed the saddlebags, adjusted his mask, and examined his guns. He gave a final tug on the cinch. There. Hip. Now we're ready, Tonto. Huh? You go to Bar J Ranch. Bar J? You not wait for Tonto. You go fast. Message plenty important. Very well, Tonto. Hail Silver Boy! The Lone Ranger knew the Bar J Ranch. He'd been there before and knew that anything that might be told him by Jeb Jackson could be relied upon. For many miles he raced until at last, streaked with dust, he reined up. Jeb! Jeb, I was told you wanted to see me. I sure do. My sake's alive, but it must be powerful important. It was Bill Cody that was looking for you. Bill Cody? Where is he? Well, I reckon he's still out somewhere, spreading the word that you're wanted. Did he leave a message for me, Jeb? Yeah, he did. He said that you was to make quick time and get to the Padre as fast as that white-legged horse could take you. The Padre? Says you know what he meant. I do know. Thanks, Jeb. Come on, Silver. Once more, the Lone Ranger rode, pausing only when it would risk the life of the stout-hearted Silver to go further without rest. The panhandle was behind him. He dashed on a northeast slant across the narrow western strip of Oklahoma, the Kansas border. One more short rest, and then an all-day ride toward Dodge City and its lawlessness. Halfway between the border and the city, the tired man and exhausted horse came to the little mission where the Padre waited. Oh, Silver! Steady, boy! You've come. I knew you would. Padre, I was far away when I received the message. You have information for me? My boy, I have a summons. It comes from the president. The, the president? He needs you. When I have seen you refreshed, I'll tell you the story. Then I will send a messenger to the city. A messenger? That new miracle of man's discovery, the electric telegraph, will take the president the message he is waiting so impatiently to hear. A 
Across the nation, from Dodge City to Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, the message flashed faster than a man could wink an eye. Into West Virginia and to the sister state, from Virginia into Maryland, to the District of Columbia, Washington, the White House. Mr. President. A tired man, eyes hollow with lack of sleep, looked up at the secretary. Yes, what is it? You told me, sir, that no matter what the hour, I was to come to you when word was received. Huh? Word? The frontier scouts have reached the man we needed. The man? At this moment, sir, the Lone Ranger is riding towards St. Louis. Go on, Silver! Faster, boy! Faster! Oh, Silver! Away! While the Lone Ranger rode out of the west, with Tonto following fully half a day behind, a fast train roared from the east. The leader of the nation went to keep an appointment with a tireless man whose energies were devoted wholeheartedly to the service of the country he loved. In St. Louis, where east met west, Several cars of one train were shunted to a siding on the outskirts of the city, just as had been the case several weeks before. But this time, the cars were not left there without an engine. The iron monster of the rails remained on duty, steam up, ready to leave at a moment's notice. It was after dark, and the vague forms of several men moved restlessly about. I haven't seen him yet, Hickok. Have you? No. No sign of him. But we had word that he'd be here. How do we know him? I've never seen him. Fine assignment we've been given. Make sure of his identity before he's admitted to the cars. Might match a draw with him. If he's what he said to be, he'll outdraw either one or both of us. After the trip he's made? Remember, he had twice as far to ride as we did. That would slow him up some. One thing I'm sure of, Hickok. He doesn't get past us till we know he's the right man. You're right. We've got to be sure. Since the last meeting, I've learned quite a bit about the extent of this plot. It's big, Cody. Mighty big. Yeah. Bigger, I'm afraid, than any of us realized. I... Hear something? Yeah. A twig snapped. That way, I think. Dark as pitch tonight. Someone moving this way. There, see? It's a man walking. Stand where you are, stranger. Well? What do you want here? I'm expecting. Masked, huh? Yes. I had to skirt the city. Did you walk? No. My horse is over there. I thought it better not to ride too close to this train. What's the name of your horse? I might ask you the same. What's your name? I never use it. Who are you? My name is Cody. Cody. Bill Cody. I've always hoped to meet you. You know Bill Hickok? I've heard of him. Wanted to know him, too. I've heard that there's only one man faster on the draw than I am, mister. I wonder if you're that man. I didn't think there was anyone who could outdraw Bill Hickok. There is. And if you're going to keep any appointment tonight, you'll have to demonstrate. Slap leather. <laughs> He's got you, Bill. Well, I... <laughs> Not one, but two guns on you, Bill. <laughs> Put your guns away. Go on inside that there car. There's a man in there who's come a long way to meet you. Very well. I'll leave my guns with you, gentlemen. Hickok, the weeks that are coming are going to make history. You and me and the Lone Ranger... Please come in here. The president is ready to speak to you. You'd better take that mask off and leave it with me. I'd prefer to keep it where it is. But you... Now, this door? Yes, but... Mr. President? But what does this mean? Who are you? Who let you come in here with that mask on your face? Take it off if you want to speak to me. Mr. President, I... Did I not make myself clear? You did, sir. Upon the recommendation of men whom I can trust, I've come all the way from Washington to hear what you have to say. But I don't propose to listen to anyone who won't uh, show me his face. Mr. President, I'll tell you exactly why I wear this mask. Some time ago, there was a massacre of some Texas Rangers. Six men were ambushed and shot. 
There were six graves, but only five of those men actually died. You see, sir, since then I've worn this mask. If my identity were known, my usefulness would be finished. I understand. Here, before you, I want to remove my mask. Thank you. There. You know, your face is just what I thought it would be. What I hoped it would be. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, I understand that the future of our country is in danger. The next few weeks may determine whether the United States will stand or fall. But let me point this out to you before we go any further. From the moment you leave here, your life will be in danger. You will have to work alone without the aid of our soldiers. If you at any time find yourself in difficulty or danger, and you will, you will have to fight your way out single-handedly. Do you understand that? Yes, Mr. President. Tonight, I'm not sure that the guards around this train can be trusted. Cody and Hickok, sir? They can be trusted. But there are others... And some of them might be members of the organization we must suppress. It is imperative that our enemies do not learn of the assignment I'm going to give you. I see. It is enough to me to know that you will take that assignment. Whatever it is, sir, you may depend upon whatever help I can give. Knowing you better from this conversation, I am confident of that. Tomorrow night, when only the most trustworthy men are on guard, I will give you instructions that... Well, they would discourage all but the bravest men. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>